Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. So Force 3.2 has been out for best part of two weeks now, and it's a great update. There's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, in particular, personal favorites are the snapshot view and probability. And I know a lot of people have bought the new synth plugins and stuff, and they're quite happy with those. Um, however, there are some bugs that have appeared, and I thought it might be quite useful to um, list them. Um, these are the ones that I've sort of seen and personally encountered as well. Um, just so that if you're someone who hasn't updated yet, you can decide whether you think it's the right time to do it or not. Um, so I thought I'd start with the most serious ones and then move down to sort of quality of life issues, really. Um, so the first major bug that I've seen people mentioning, and this has been mentioned by numerous people in both the there are two main facebook groups for the force and also on reddit as well the force subreddit um, are that since updating to 3.2 people have not been able to open uh, projects from previous firmware um, versions now that's obviously an awful uh, a really serious bug it doesn't seem to be happening to everyone though which suggests to me i'm not an expert i'm not a developer but it suggests to me that in some projects there could be some mappings or some, I don't know, setups or uh, there's something actually in the individual project which is causing it to break when it's opened by 3.2. So long story short, those people have had to revert back to the last one, which was 3.1.8, I think in order to open those projects. However, I have seen a couple of reports of people saying even when they reverted back, they then couldn't open those older projects because the act of opening or trying to open it in 3.2 had done something to the project. Um, I don't know what that would be, but they are reporting that they then couldn't open it on the older firmware updates. So all of that in a nutshell, um, I would say that if that is a risk, my advice would be before, if you haven't updated to 3.2, before you do, back up all of your projects to an SD card or a USB stick or something so that you've got like um, unmolested versions of them sat there so that if you do have to roll back and anything's gone pear-shaped, you've got your projects uh, to hand you should probably do that anyway it's probably good practice to do that but certainly it seems with this 3.2 update that would appear to be um, something that you should definitely do before pressing the button so that's the first one and probably or possibly the most serious one the second serious one is with regard to external interfaces now i've had a bunch of comments on the last three or four videos i've made from people saying the, the 3.2 update has broken uh, c connection or compatibility with um, some interfaces, audio interfaces. It would appear, and I've got comments saying, numerous comments saying this, that it's completely broken compatibility with the eye connectivity um, interfaces, the, the, the ones that let you kind of sort of do two two way uh, connection i can't remember what they're called now anyway the two eye connectivity uh, in interfaces appear to be completely broken and people have reported that even going into sort of resetting the firmware of the interface of going into the uh, into the config software and trying to change mappings and stuff nothing has fixed it they're just basically broken um, so if you use one of those interfaces you definitely want to think twice about updating the other ones I've seen uh, mentioned are the Tascam model um, 12, 16, 24 um, interface mixers. People are saying they still work, but there's a load of that, you know, the horrendous glitchy poppy kind of buffer related noises that uh, pop up sometimes are now happening all the time where, where they weren't happening on the previous update. So again, if you're a Tascam user, you need to be aware of that. I've tested 3.2 with my Behringer UMC 404 HD and it works fine, no problem. So it would appear if you're a Behringer user, you're probably okay. I've also seen one or two mentions of the uh, RME, the Firewire um, uh, interface is not working as well. So again, in a nutshell, um, if you're, uh, what I would say is if you're, a, if you're a performer and you've got a gig coming up, which means you need to play your old, old projects and you need to use an outboard interface, I would suggest now is not the time to update. I would probably wait for 
3.2.1 or whatever patch they release in the next hopefully week or so who knows how long it will take but those are the two the two serious ones that have the potential to break your workflow and stop you doing what you want to do we now move on to some sort of uh less serious but quality of life issues um, now this is the first one i want to mention is snapshots um because i've personally encountered this snapshots are basically like locked states they allow you to uh, take a snapshot of automation parameters that make a load of changes and then reload the initial state by um, basically launching the scene again it's a brilliant feature and it works while you're using it however numerous people have reported and i've experienced this myself once you've finished working on it and you save the project and close it down when you reopen uh, that project uh, next time you turn the force on all of the uh, track levels will have gone down to zero or infinity and so will some of the um, uh, submix levels. Uh, basically, it screws up all of your volume levels um, and you have to go and manually reset them again. So again, it's one of those things, if you're just working at home, if you're just someone that is messing around at home, you might decide that that's not the end of the world and you're happy to reset it and sort of reposition those volumes. If you're a live player and you've got gigs coming up, you don't want to have you know, the possibility of rocking up to the venue, loading up your projects, and all of a sudden, all of your volumes are down. So depending on your situation, that's either a, a, an annoyance or it could be a, a, a significant problem for the live player. So that's one that has been noted throughout the community and I personally have seen as well, just consulting my notes. Um, the other, uh, another little one is empty clips. So you'll create a MIDI clip and you put, enter a load of notes, data, and it plays perfectly fine. But then when you view it in the clip editor view, there are no notes there and you have to select another clip and then reselect that clip and the notes suddenly appear. It's a weird one. It's just a little glitch. Uh, it doesn't affect anything. Everything still plays fine, but it is a bit annoying. I suppose if you're the sort of live performer that does tweaking and needs to see what they've just recorded, it could be a problem if you're playing live. To me, that falls under something that's very obviously a little UI bug, which will be fixed in the next update. Um, touch FX. This is one I haven't seen anyone else reporting, but I've experienced this. So the new touch effects are basically insert effects that have got a bunch of different things, beat, repeats, reverse, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I've noticed that um, basically when you apply them all to tracks, so you've got eight tracks, you put eight of these on instances on different tracks, set them all up, everything's perfectly fine save the project, go back to the project and all of the, or, or some of the parameters that you set in those touch effects have gone back to um, the preset value. They've lost their memory, in other words. Um, I haven't seen anyone else mention it, but I was trying to record a video I posted a couple of days ago about using touch effects and I had to, to uh, it took several attempts for me to record that video because I kept going into it, turning the things and nothing was happening because they'd all reset themselves again. So again, that falls under an annoyance. If you're a home player, if you're gigging and you're thinking about using touch effects, one to bear in mind, although I must say, I haven't seen anyone else mention that. This is purely my experience for that one. Um, oh yeah, and uh, the last one that I've seen multiple people mention, again, it's a UI issue. In the step sequencer, certain controls don't seem to fit on the screen properly. Pro properly, can't speak. Um, again, it's a UI thing. Everything works. It's just that when you try and look at it, not all of the controls are on the screen. So you have to change your control view and go back into it. Then it seems to have fixed itself. I've seen multiple people mention that on Facebook. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, but again, it's it's not a deal breaker, I suppose, unless you are um, a live player who's literally sort of programming loops as you as you're on stage, then it could be an issue. So those are the those are the the um, bugs that I have either seen myself or seen reported by multiple people or have had um, uh, commented on the videos I've made about the three point two update over the last week or so. Um, I this thought has just crystallised in my mind, and it it seems completely obvious, I suppose. But if you are a live player and you've got gigs coming up, I don't think you should update to 3.2 right now. Wait until they release a patch that's going to fix some of these little bugs. Um, and before you update, if you do decide to update, back up all of your projects. It's just so 
that if something weird does go on, you haven't lost years worth of work and you've got all of your old projects sitting on a USB stick or something like that. So that seems to be it. Two major break, uh, potentially game breaking or workflow breaking bugs um, that lots of people have encountered uh, that need an urgent patch from Akai and four or five little niggly kind of things that um, if you're a home player, probably won't bother you too much. Um, and you may well decide that it's worth updating. I've updated, I've been using it for a week. Uh, I love it. I, I love the probability stuff. I love the snapshots. I think the touch effects are cool. I haven't bought any of the plugins since because I don't really feel the need to buy some more plugins for the force at the moment, um, but I'm really enjoying it. Um, so the second they get those big kind of sort of workflow breaking bugs fixed, and some of these other little things ironed out, I think it's a top-notch, super solid update. It just doesn't work quite properly at this point in time. But fingers crossed, uh, Akai get it fixed in the next week or so. Cheers. I hope that was useful, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.